and all these wonderful things. But you know, we we saw we saw the god that was partying earlier. We're gonna get to see him again. I'm really stoked for this. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Spawning here in the top right corner of the map, though, we've got Team Dead Pixels starting it off with True and his teammate Patience. And on the left side, as the blue Zerg, it's sucks three. And the yellow Protoss, a parting for Team Big Boys. Now this breaks my heart. We had Team APS, the former champions, fall out here at the semifinals. I was really hoping to see Big Boys versus uh, APS. Yeah. But, at the same time, I'm really excited too, because this could go for either uh, direction. It is a mirror matchup with the Protoss and Zerg versus Protoss and Zerg, and... Despite the really cool stuff we saw at a party today, I don't think you're going to get to 1v2 these guys. No way, <laughs> no how. Oh, probably, probably not. But is it the same? No, no, ZBZ, that's right. Yeah, it's going to be hard to base trade 1v2 versus a Protoss instead of a double Zerg. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just kind of... I really want one of these games to come down to... Two players knocking each other out fully and entirely, so we get like a 1v1 follow-up. Haven't we gotten that? Not, not quite to the extent that like it's a pure 1v1. There's always been like something on the side, right? But, okay. uh... Alright. Yeah, so Maybe we'll, we'll, we did that. Well, we've done that guess, multiple times, not just like once, but... Um, I guess the question for me really sits on what are... What are or party? What are party in the socks are you gonna do on this? Because we know how true and patience play. We see them through an entire tournament, and we've seen them through their matches today. I don't know that they're gonna be able to necessarily abuse anything, but party in socks, you've also been playing a little bit uniquely. So again, this could be a really cool matchup one way or the other. Yeah. But uh, holy freaking schmoly, is this real? Autumn flame. Autumn Flame, if you're lurking in chat, man, thank you so much. He just donated 100 freaking dollars. With a message that just simply says plus one for entertainment. <laughs> so glad you're enjoying the tournament, man. Nice. I think we're definitely gonna pocket that hundred dollars and put it towards the prize pool of the next two v two tournament whenever we do it. But uh, so I think I think not it. Pocket. Well, okay, pocket it to the prize pool. I guess whatever. Save it for the prize pool. However you want to phrase that. But... I have three pockets: one for base trade, one for the prize pool, and one for me. Well, it's kind of actually, yeah. Got, well, jeans have four pockets. You have two front ones and two back ones. So I never use the back ones. Well, because you're not a guy. That's where our wallets go. <laughs> I wish that I could use my wallet that way. You have purses. They're basically mini backpacks. No, no complaints. they're really annoying. I definitely prefer real backpacks. <laughs> like, if you're trying to take a purse out of the car, it's actually really annoying. <laughs> No, I've, I've unfortunately or luckily not had to deal with that, as uh, the, the few women I've dated, I've refused to be the the, the purse <laughs> bitch for. Actually, I, I remember. Uh, oh, yeah, hold on, you know, this is a story for another time. Uh, we do the Stargate openers for both the Protoss players, but neither in proxy. But Soxry is scouting for the proxies, and uh, not. Sadly, not going to find anything, but not that there's anything to be found in the first place. So, uh, one thing I'm a little bit curious about though is the expansions. We do have the Zerg players playing very similarly, true, a little bit ahead. Mm hmm. A very passive, the most passive opener we've had. Yeah, I would, I would say so. I would say so. Zerg actually got an expansion first. What the heck? I mean, not everything's been cheese all ins, but you're right. Like, this was a somewhat passive start to this, but. Uh, so actually he's got a couple of Banelings morphing outside the base, he's got some Zerglings on the way, so... Oh, first of all, it's still bugged on uh, Banelings cocoons, but... Looks like with the, uh, the Phoenix, this was scouted, so pulls all the drones back, he's got two Queens on the ramp. This is actually pretty nice moves out of, out of True. Mm -hmm. Looks very much like a 1v1 right now, instead of a 2v2. Yeah, just a ZVC. <laughs> Yeah, it's just ZBZ, Parting and Patience are both just macroing. Usually Patience not going for that uh, Nexus, which means that Parting will have the better macro game. But of course, Patience looking to do some damage. Unfortunately, he wants, I know he wants to move off that ramp and go snipe the Banelings to save that hatchery, but if he does, it risks the Lings flooding right on through and compromising the base for these two. So, waiting for his teammate. We got the Graviton Beam on the, on the uh, Banelings, nicely done. He's still going to lose the hatchery, but this is better than compromising their mains. Yeah. Patience did also clean up Parting's Oracle very nicely with the uh, the counter Phoenixes, basically. And as we said before, Phoenixes are apparently very good in twos. So yeah, Parting, knowing this, goes ahead and throws on a second gateway or a Stargate. What's kind of funny, though, is Phoenix fights 
in 2v2s, it doesn't really change much from what is 1v1s with PvP. Phoenix fights are really stupid, really snowbally. It's perhaps the only thing more snowbally and worse than Reapers, but uh, yeah, the second target's going to give him that extra production, so he should be able to take most of these fights following it up. Well, true and Sox 3, what are you going to do? I think the most common is has, has been those roaches. Just roach versus roach, to kind of the... Oh, they're easier just to, to help brute force with your, your partner than, you know, delicately playing with the mutas that we saw Revival do last game. And continued aggression from Sox 3 might still work out. Three banings versus three. The graph time being really nice. I still expect that bailing to explode in the air and deal damage to the Phoenix. It kind of actually bothers me that it doesn't, but really, hmm. kind of like a scourge, you know. If you if you lift it up, it's like picking up a bomb, right? <laughs> that's not a yeah, good that's thing. True. true. Well, patience finally expands, but he is losing out on the Phoenix War, is he not? Seven versus oh, only six now, he... but soon enough he should be. He doesn't know about the second Stargate though, so it kind of makes sense. He he feels like he's producing enough, and it would normally be enough in most situations. And uh, the problem is, even if you go for the Anion Pulse Crystal upgrade, the speed is going to be matched. So if Party starts off in range of Patience, he's going to stay in range Ooh. of Patience. And now Trues actually, with that Overlord, scouts the Crazy Phoenix count. He sees a Stargate. Oh, but he doesn't see the second one! How did he get so far in there? <laughs> I think it was like sitting back here the whole time, maybe chilling, I don't know. But um, okay. yeah, this is, this is going to be very awkward because we're going to have better Phoenixes out of patience, but he's not going to be able to abuse that range is the problem. I'm, I'm fairly sure that the range is just the Kingmaker, like... I don't think it, it will be. I, I think so. It's been a long time since we've seen so many PvPs where I can say for sure that was really just PvP Pro League like two years ago. Well, the idea is, okay, if he starts off out of range and perfect controllers, no mistakes, then yes. But I feel like this is going to be very similar to what you see versus Mutalisks, right? Where you'll stop and churn, stop and churn, and then you'll be in range and you'll stay in range because Phoenix Speed is going to match Phoenix Speed. And I think Mass Phoenix is, is going to outproduce or outmatch better Phoenixes. And in fact, Parting's not even that far behind. His Fleet Beacon's on the way. He's going to have any Impulse Crystals as well. I've... We've never seen a PvP go to this point. We've never seen a 2v2 go to this point. So this is kind of cool to see how this is going to play out. Yeah, the last PvP that we saw, uh, you dropped out or something. It was Phoenix vs. Phoenix. And it did end, you know, a lot sooner than this one did. You know, only uh, 10 versus 10 Phoenix or something like that, not 15 plus. You know, it'd be perfect if we did have, like, four or five Corruptors come out of Sox and play this kind of... Like, give parting control and play... No, no, Rifkin, I don't think Zerg remembers that they have Corruptors, remember? Right, 2v2 is my bad. Yeah. But I was just saying, it happen. would be cool, it would be cool. Uh, now, we did have an attempted bailing attack into the middle line of Sox Tree. Sorry, we just barely missed that, but it did not kill much, if anything, so uh, really not too bad. Mm. Well, we're not going to see the test of more versus better in this <laughs> game. We're going to see a difference in upgrades, too. I'm pretty sure upgrades don't really factor into Phoenix fights at all. That, I do not know, but it is funny. I have one go for plus one and one go for plus well, it's cause one armor. It's because the bonus damage is plus five. If the bonus damage is plus one or plus two, that's, yeah, like yeah, a little bit. That's, I think, where the upgrades come in. But I think it's actually, you think, a full level three weapon upgrade before it really comes into effect. But even then, you're right, like, this is going to be armor, so it might not even matter. True, by the way, making sure there's no ninja bases taken. Nothing cheeky going on. It's a very passive 2v2. <laughs> it's the first purely... Macro 2v2 we've seen. Didn't period. sign up for this. Man, more action. Uh, what is kind of crazy though is it is I feel less about the Protoss players, despite the fo the focus on the Phoenix, and a lot of this is going to come down to the Zerg. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. The Zergs are doing pretty much the same thing. Although uh, Soxer's getting Burrow Tumbling Claws. I do feel like if this snowball's out of control, both ways have similar Phoenix games. If this snowball's out of control, uh, we might then have like 10 Phoenix to say Graviton beam up 10 Roaches or something. And that's, a, that's a whole nother can of worms. But uh, despite the fact that Party had more Phoenix production, Patience has found a way to catch up and he's actually not too far behind. But similar to Mutalisk Wars, I think numbers are going to be what, what is key here. And actually, Parting, he's stacked up. If <laughs> There's no concaves when it comes to these fights, guys. They're going to look really really super dumb 
And now one of the Zergs oh. could try and go for oh. Festers. This was actually kind of key. He could have tried to defend the Roaches, but he gets on top of Patience. Well, Patience was grabbed on baby, so the attention was lost. The Phoenix was just spread. And now Party has a three Phoenix lead. Uh, I'm really surprised the Zergs aren't helping them out. Where are the Hydras? Okay, the Hydras might be picked up, but where are the Infestors? Because even if the Infestors are picked up, hopefully they get their oh fungal on first. Yeah, fungal growth would be so sick. But yeah, Parting being very neither. careful. He doesn't want to... doing it. Parting, both three Phoenix at a time. Both players have production at the wazoo. And it's, I feel like we are going to see like a maxed out Phoenix army versus a maxed out Phoenix army at this rate. Well, Soxie's Roach is looking better than Trues. He's got the upgrades. He's got the Roach count. Uh, he's got the, uh, of course, the Tunneling Claws as well. But they Both of them didn't go for the gold base. Yeah. Also the first time we've seen this. Because the Phoenix can't lift up the rocks. <laughs> uh, Parting Space is going to die. The Roaches are going to just chew through those cannons. And as he turns around to go fight this at home, he's got to be careful he doesn't get intercepted by those Phoenix. Looks like Patience is going to get on top of the production and start camping this out. And that's going to be a little bit devastating for Parting to deal with. But the Nexus dies. Ooh, that's gonna sting. Yeah, well, it's a base for a base. Yeah, true enough, but it's a Protoss base for a Zerg base. So which one hurts more? Uh, Parting, by the way, does uh -huh. still have a Phoenix lead. This is what I imagine Star Wars looked like. Star Wars? Why? Just because, you know, it's like all the X-Wings and TIE Fighters going nuts on each other. It's like X-Wing versus X-Wing. Whatever, man. Why are they fighting each other? Okay, it's, it's what fighting I imagine real space battles look like, okay? <laughs> now, Dude, this we're is driving actually... Through the, uh, I, I gotta give credit to Saxory. He's been playing the ZVZ portion of this really well. This hasn't really been a 2v2 mm -hmm. so much as it has been a 1v1 aside another 1v1, but we've had... Patience has been actually picking up a few roaches this game, and he's killed some, whereas Parting hasn't really been contributing in the same way, but... Uh, this is... Such a weird game, Zombie Grove. Like I said, I think this will come down to the Zerg players, and if that's going to be the continued case for the game, Soxry has been playing this out a lot better, a lot more efficiently. Uh, Soxry is the first to go out, try and go up to Hydralisk, you should say, because if he can't afford to get a lot of Hydralisk and keep them all bundled up, the Phoenix is... all oh, takes his five seconds and they will kill them, no problem. But he's going to try. And, I mean, eventually this has got to come to a head, right? Like, they both have to fight each other just in <laughs> yeah. the middle. At some point, a fight has to happen, correct? <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's just not happened so far. In fact, True is now the highest army supply. Just maxing out on those roaches. I'm still surprised there's no Hydras or, well, more importantly, Infestors. Because I, yeah. I feel like Infestors would definitely contribute to the Roach Wars. They would super help the Phoenix fight. I mean, if for no other reason, that, that 30 damage the Fungal Growth does could be what you need to just snowball an army out of control. Yeah. Oh, you know what I forgot? Oh! Patience hasn't, though. Guardian Shield affects air. Hmm. Guardian Shield will help these Phoenix fights. I think? It's two damage reduction. That's a lot of damage. I don't know the science on it, though, because we just don't see this happen enough, if ever. But this quantity of Phoenix... Normally, Phoenix versus Phoenix fights, by the way. These end, like, you know, 12 Phoenix versus 12. <laughs> in a 1v1. This is going to be 41 Phoenix versus 43. This is something you have to go to the unit tester to find out, but Sox actually sneaks some roaches by with Tunneling Claws on both sides. Uh, it will kill a lot of probes, a lot of drones while this goes on, actually. Pa uh, Patience lost a lot of his income through this. But the Phoenix yeah. War begins! Oh, he did remember to pop the Guardian Shield, but the poor sentry's like, huh, hey, hey, okay, we're back here. Right, I then. like, I really like that he didn't overextend from it, though. But still, the, the the three Phoenix lead maintained out of uh, parting is going to be really nice. This is so dangerous. That sentry must be feeling like the worst sentry right now. Like, I'm going to die, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for that Graviton beam. There we go. Does get grabbed. Does get picked up. Roach is underneath this as well. We do have the Roaches from True marching around the map on the north side trying to get involved with the fight down here to the south. But the Hydralisks, finally, there's something to help out their teammates. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of crossover, maybe? A couple of Hydralisk shots could really change the course of the Phoenix fight. Looks like True might be thinking about taking a fight with Spore Crawlers. I think where are those Spore Crawlers going down? Or oh, he's looking to Overmax. I think he's just going to Overmax, yeah. Build yeah, Overmax. But with Roaches, 
So, so it's also getting festers. Uh. I want to stress something, by the way. The overlay reads wrong on this. It says 206 max supply, but it's still 200, and they see 200. It's RUI on the 2v2 side of this for the observers that looks bugged. So this will say 210 sometimes. It'll say 206. It really depends how many overlords are spawning when you're, when you're breaking that cap, but you still have to... Uh, you still have to manually break the supply with the uh, build cancels. But parting, you know, he's he's managed to expand like crazy behind this. He took the gold base. He took the base he had lost. He's moving back towards the north. I mean, this is truly becoming a split map. And I kind of feel that the further this goes on, the better chance parting can just throw down four extra stargates and start producing like seven phoenix at a time. What would happen if he transitioned into an entirely different army composition? Like what? I don't know, Archons? <laughs> Yo, what if you went Battle Cruisers? Uh, Rifkin? I don't you think. Mean okay, sorry. Well, what if you went Battle Cruisers, though? <laughs> I mean. I really couldn't tell if you were trolling me. No, I messed up. But the uh, the, the fungal growths, I think, are going to be what wins this game more than anything else. This, is, this was a long, weird macro 2v2, but I think Soxby's fungal growths are going to be the kingmakers here. Not for the roaches, but for the phoenix. And if the phoenix go down, Parting will pick up every roach on the ground. Now, the phoenix fight is just going shredding. It's so far in the favor of, of Parting. It's not even funny. He's just devastating this. The snowball effect is very real. The Hydra is getting involved with the fight too. He wins the Roach War on the ground. Drew backs up with the Roaches. But as the Phoenixes start getting wrecked, Party can come with, with 27 Phoenix. He can lift up every single Roach on the map from True. He's done it. Uh, Party's done it. Well, Soxry yeah. did it, I think, technically, but they Party's done it. it. Yeah. yeah. Team Bower! <laughs> So that's really how the better unit composition. He had enough hydras that were never picked off, and he also went up to infestors. Like, true, I think I think failed patience more than the other way around or whatever for the other team. Like, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. It's not failed, but they just I no don't know. patience <laughs> is in Skype right now saying, "True, you have failed me. You failed me for the last time, Star Scream. We're kicking you out of the team." God, Phoenix fights are so dumb. <laughs> Yes, yes they are. Well, if I have some fungals coming out of true, but it's a little bit too late. I mean, that's I think that's the problem with this game. There's a lot of there was definitely a lot of tunnel vision from both sides for a long time. But team big boys, they're going to take game number 1 in the semifinals. That game did not catch my cannonball.